Up to this point, we have only proved Green's theorem for a very simple case, and I say simple with dual meaning here. The book called a simple region, or, or called the region that we proved Green's theorem for a simple region, and remember that D is simple, again by the book's definition, if it may be regarded as both type 1 and type 2 at the same time. So if it may be regarded as both types 1 and 2. So this is the case for which we proved Green's theorem. Um, actually, in the statement of Green's theorem, we said, in reality, D just must be a Jordan region. So a Jordan region is a region bounded by a Jordan curve. And so that's a simply connected uh, region in space, or sorry, in the plane. So a Jordan curve is one for which it is a simple closed curve, right? And a simply connected region is just one that is bounded by a simple closed curve like this. So in our statement of Green's theorem, the region D looks like this, and it's bounded by this curve C. But in reality, Green's theorem applies to much more general regions than this. Um, we are not going to, we didn't even prove it for this more general case right here, right? So we're not going to prove Green's theorem for this extended case, but we are going to want to use Green's theorem in this case. And so the true fact here, or, you know, at least what we're going to use this for, but extended Green's theorem. So the statement that we're going to make is this. We are going to change the restriction on D or loosen the restriction on D to be the following. So D now must just be <coughs> a region, excuse me. So D is a region in the XY plane, all right, uh, whose components are bounded by Jordan curves. So in this case, I'm gonna say finitely many Jordan curves. So C1 up to, let's say, C sub n. And so the picture here, there's a couple different pictures. One picture is that our curves could just be, you know, the same usual kind of Jordan blobs in some sense. All right, so we have C1, C2, C3, C4. And as long as these are positively oriented like this, then Green's theorem will apply on the region D, which is thought of as just the union. Union just means the, in some sense, the sum of all of these, so the union of all of these regions. And so D is is the disjointed region that's bounded by all these different curves. Okay, so it can have multiple boundary components. Now, in this case, we shouldn't be surprised because Green's theorem applies on each individual portion of this region. So if we wanted to prove this, we could just break it up into pieces, right? We could break up the region D into its components. These are called components. And then we could just you know, treat each individual component as a different region and put it all together at the end. All right, so this, this should not be a surprise. Now, if you try to include infinitely many of these, then, then you have more of an issue. We're not going to do that. So um, let's just say that we have finitely many of these disjointed uh, regions D. They all individually satisfy Green's theorem, and so Green's theorem extends to the, to the union of all of them. But there's a more interesting case, and by the way, it's possible that some of these regions might, you know, you might be able to combine the boundary curve. There might, they might be able to touch and share a portion of the boundary. And in that case, you could just chop up the region by the boundary itself. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, <clears throat> the most interesting case of the extended Green's theorem is when you have your Jordan region, let's say D, all right, and so this is positively oriented around the boundary, so this is C1. And then your the other curve, so the second boundary curve, is actually an interior curve. So I drew kind of like a circle here, but this is gonna, I'm gonna call this C2. And what I want to, re, the way I wanna represent the region itself is all of the region that's inside the dark blue curve, but outside of the light blue curve, okay? And now remember, for our curves to be positively oriented, 
um, the region has to be to the left, right? So if we were to travel around this inner lighter blue colored curve in what we think is like usually the positive orientation, then, and you look out your windows, think of you're driving in a car around this curve, right? Look out your window, on the left-hand side, you're actually not in the region. This is not in the region, this, this portion here. The region is on the right-hand side. That's wrong, right? That's wrong. For our curve to be positively oriented, we need to then traverse in the opposite direction, right? So that this one, um, so that the region is always on our left. All right, and so, it turns out that Green's theorem applies to this region. This region is no longer simply connected. Okay, simply connected means that it doesn't that the region doesn't have any holes. But I like explicitly put a hole in here, right? So how are we going to do this? I claim that Green's theorem is going to apply to this region, and I'm not going to write a proof, but I will kind of give the idea here. So the boundary of this region is C1 union C2. It's the, the combination of these two curves. Again, they have opposite orientations in some sense, right? But really we say that they both are positively oriented because the region that we care about is on the left-hand side. All right, now what we can do is we just said up here that if we take, we, we kind of justified it in words. Again, I'm not writing a proof here, right? But um, we justified the, the idea though that if we can break up our region into a, many, at least finitely many, different portions of regions that all obey the original Green's theorem, then we can just kind of paste those together, right? So what we can do is we can introduce a couple of new curves to this mix, right? And we can say, all right, let's pick a point, I'll call this point A over here on this boundary, and pick a point, say A prime here, and then we can choose any path which takes us from A to A prime. So you can think of this as being like a straight line. I think in the book they draw this as a straight line. But you can then pick up this curve right here, right? And travel through through the region and get to this point A prime. And then from A prime, the inner region's orientation says to keep going this way, right? So to tra pick up at A prime and travel down here. And now the idea is at some point say B prime, we get back off of this curve, right? And we take some path back out to the outer boundary. All right, and so this will be, take us back out to the point B. And then from there we can pick up and complete this curve, okay? So at this point, what have I done? I've introduced now this curve C1, uh, I've already got C1 and C2. So let's call this one C3 and call this green one C4. All right, and so if I pick up and I take the portion of C1, so let's call this C1 with a hat. What am I going to do for this portion of C1? I'm going to start at B, and I'm going to take the original C1 to the point A, okay? But then I'm going to make a left-hand turn, and I'm going to take then this portion C3 over to A prime, okay? And then from A prime, I'm going to pick up C2. So this is kind of convoluted in some ways, but C2 over to B prime. Right? And then I'm going to close the curve off by taking B prime to B. And that's by taking C3, I should say, B prime to B. <clears throat> All right, and when in doing so, what have I done? Well, I've divided our region into two portions. This portion downstairs that I've just written this curve C1 for, this is now, let's call it D1. This region D1 is a simply connected region now, right? So it doesn't have a hole anymore. We got rid of it, we went around the hole. Okay, but what I need to do now is I need to pick up, I've ignored the, the top half of this region up here, of the original region D. And so what I have to do now is, all right, so I filled out this one, right? Now I need to figure out how do I represent the upper portion, okay? So the C1 with a hat is the boundary curve for D1. Well, let's do the same thing. I'll write it in red. So this is gonna be C2 hat. All right, for this one, um, we can start at B if you want, but remember that the orientation has to be such that as we travel around our boundary curve, right, the region has to be on our left-hand side. So if I start from B and I wanna enclose the upper half of this region, then I have, to, I have to go backwards along C4, right? So I have to go from B back to B prime first along what's actually negative C4 because I have to reverse the orientation, right? I have to reverse this orientation. Um, over here I named, I made a mistake when I copied this down. I'm sure you all saw me, but I got so excited. So that was C4, that last one that went from B prime to B. Now I'm undoing that in some sense. I'm going backwards, right? I'm going backwards uh, from B 
back to B prime. All right. And then what do I do? Well, now I need to pick up here and I need to keep the orientation correct, right? This curve, I'm going to keep the same orientation. So from B prime, I'm going to continue on C2 until I get back over to A prime. And notice that when I combine this portion of C2 with this portion of C2, I've completed all of C2, right? So you go from A prime to B prime, and now I'm going back from B prime back to A prime. So that completes the full cycle, right? All right, now what? Well, the next step is I need to get out of here, right? So at A prime, I pick up and I go back along opposite orientation along C3. So at this point, I'm going to take negative C3 back to the point A. Okay, so again, this portion of this curve cancels with this portion. They're canceled out. This portion of C3 is going to cancel this portion of C3. Canceled out, right? Once I'm back out to C3, what do I do? Or sorry, once I'm back out to A, after finishing this little travel along C3, what do I do? I'm at A, I need to enclose the region, I go along C1 in the positive orientation until I get back to B. Okay, so this goes back to B along C1. And it, just like it was with C2, right, this combination, this is the same, this is going to combine with this one to finish off C1. All right, and once I've done this, I've gone along this path here. Uh, I'm trying to find a different color here to shade. I'll use, uh, I've used all my colors. I'll use yellow, which is, might not be able to be seen too well. But the idea is now, if we shade in up here, this we can call, I'll just write it in black so we can read it. This is called uh, D2. And the idea here is now our region D1 plus D2 in a union sense, so D1 union D2 is equal to D, and the boundary curves of these are both Jordan curves now, okay? So we've kind of cut out this hole by going around it, um, and the boundaries, so C1 bar and C2 bar, right? These are the boundaries of this D, okay? Now, we're not gonna use C1 bar and C2 bar. We're gonna usually use the original. We're gonna use the original, right? The C1 plus C2. Um, to be our boundary curves of D, but the point is they both work. This one fits the original theorem. This is what we're going to actually work with when we do examples moving forward. All right, so this is just an introduction uh, lecture to the extended Green's theorem and just an idea of why the extended Green's theorem is going to work for us. Um, moving forward, we're going to just use this theorem. We're not going to go through the rigorous proof, but I hope uh, this conversation has helped you understand that indeed if Green's theorem is true, then indeed this extended theorem is also true.